across the hoop. Kong bows to no one. There's something provoking in war. All right, guys, what is going on today for me is a huge, exciting video. I'm going to go and tell you exactly why it's a huge, exciting video for me. Um, I know it's been almost three weeks since my last fuel system video. People are probably wondering what's going on. We did the fuel system. Why are we not getting the tuning going? I'm going to go through everything that happened and what was going on. And we had some issues. We had some pretty big issues. Nothing severe with the motor or anything like that. Um, but we had a lot of fuel system issues. And I'm trying to figure out what was going on. Why is... Uh, why are we not getting why can't we get this thing tuned in properly and um i started talking to some people and, and you know they told me you know why why are you doing this why are you not doing this obviously everyone's got their opinions we did something that i know i should have done from the beginning we first did the fuel system and i will tell you this it worked and we are finally ready to be tuned but i'm going to go through everything what was going on with the truck and why why we could not really tune it properly even with the new fuel system so guys uh, yeah, as you see, I'm excited. I just took the truck for a drive to do the test that I wanted to do, and we are ready. It is finally ready to be tuned. We are running right where we want to be, right where Jay said we would be. If, if everything came out prop the right way, and I'm going to tell you why and everything like that, then yeah. So um, yeah, guys, let's get started on the video, and uh, I'll talk to you in a minute. All right, guys, I'm not going to take the truck for a drive. I just did. It's hot. It's warm out. It's loud. Um, I'm going to explain to you everything that was going on over the past couple of weeks and the frustrations that I've been dealing with um, from the beginning. And, you know, we did the fuel system. The fuel, everything went great. Fuel system went in great. No issues with the actual install of the fuel system. There's literally only one reason the fuel system wasn't doing what it was supposed to. And I'm going to go through all that. So, as you know, the on the way home... On the way home from um, Steve's, after we did the fuel system, we shredded the belt really bad. I come to find out, well, a couple of people guys were like, well, did he install the ATI properly? Was it aligned? Yes, everything is aligned. There was no issues with the ATI. Um, as you know, the ATI is a six, is an eight rib, and the entire Whipple setup for me is a six rib. Well, when you put the belts on, I don't know if Steve did this, it could, no big deal. Um, you have to literally feel under the ATI when you put it on it feels like it's on But if you don't get under the ATI pulley with the eight rib you could feel it not being fully flushed Even though it'll look fully flushed You can't even tell you literally have to get under that and feel it to see if it's fully flushed and what it was doing It was walking off because I don't think Steve just got under there and felt it. it's not a big deal I'm not mad at the man for that. He's it's the man. He did everything for me So what happened on that first one it walked off and shredded the belt no big deal. Like I said, Steve gave me a belt. We got home. And after that, you know, Jay was off. So what I've been noticing after we've been doing it, Jay said we had plenty of fuel, so we should not go lean. No matter what, we should not go lean. He put so much fuel in the, in the first tune just to be safe. He doesn't want to run out of fuel and obviously go lean and blow the motor or anything like that. So we were going actually a little bit lean. And I will be letting out instantly, letting out instantly. I, I have a couple of clips. I'm not going to throw all the clips off. I will show pictures and stuff. I don't want to show me going lean and stuff like that. But we went pretty lean, pretty lean a couple of times. And I'm videoing for him. And, you know, well, trying to figure out what's going on. We got this whole new fuel system in. It, the, fuel, the fuel pump we have is the biggest single pump that can take. This fuel pump literally can handle 900. I did the calculations, can handle up to 900 horsepower on uh, 93 race gas, what non non E85, and I know we're nowhere near that, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So I was reading online, doing some research. Fuel pressure was set at 58, and a couple of guys online said they had the same issues. So I actually raised the fuel pressure up a little bit. Let me raise the fuel pressure up to see if it'll help. It wasn't the smartest decision, like to see if it'll help. You know, raise fuel pressure up top so we don't go as lean did not work and when i did it we literally the second i floored it it went bing bang boom i shredded a belt when i mean so bad it literally engraved onto the alternator really bad it engraved onto i had to carve it off almost the alternator shreds everywhere it was not just like a normal belt slip this thing was nasty so you know I got home i noticed the belt was destroyed bad and i'm like holy crap Put a new belt on, and we were having issues since then. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? Got the new belt on. Uh, first, I thought we blew the alternator. I literally went to AutoZone, bought an alternator from AutoZone. They got decent ones. It's just an alternator. And I put that on, and then I noticed that 
as I'm changing the alternator, I hit a spark. Yes, I forgot to disconnect the battery terminal and sparked, boom, sparked every, you know, it just made a big spark. Started the truck, put the alternator, I'm like, all right, we're only at 11 volts still, something's not right. So, check the fuse, yeah, I blew the 180 slash 120 alternator fuse, I guess you call it the alternator fuse, the, uh, the battery terminal fuse, whatever you want to call it. I blew it. I forgot to disconnect the terminal and sparked it, no big deal, I actually ran a fillet, got one that day. That was all good. Truck was still running bad, it was still idle surging and backfiring and all types of crazy crap, and I'm just like, what the hell? So... After I, uh, you know, I, I talked to Matt Fikak, he said, you might, you know, see if we got a vacuum leak, because it sounds like a vacuum leak. And what did I do? I did a test that he said, his test didn't really show me much. So what did I do? I literally took the entire Whipple supercharger off and looked under, because I know if you blow the O-ring under the Whipple, you can have some issues. So I took the Whipple supercharger off, looked under there, bam, the O-ring under the Whipple was blown out. When I did that fuel pressure thing and I floored it, the second I floored it, it was like, it jerked so bad. It must have went, I don't know what happened, but it shredded, like I said, when it shredded that belt, bam, that's when that issue, that blew that O-ring out so fast. Um, so I hit up my Nick, Nick from Whipple Superchargers. He's sending me an O-ring kit. Actually, I actually saw it in Arabia. It was last week, but he's also out in California, so no big deal. Um, talked to a couple guys. What do you do for when you blow them out? A couple guys said, get red RTV and put it under the supercharger. And I did that, and it sealed it great. So there was no more freaking backfiring. It was driving good. We actually did some throttle body tests. I thought the throttle body was bad. Relearned. It was so much crap. And this was all within a couple of weeks, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. I want to get this thing tuned up and hitting the track and running. So fixed everything. Everything was running great. And over the past week, I didn't know, uh, you know, what was going on. I'm trying to figure it out. And let me tell you, I'll tell you this right now. When me and Steve installed the, the fuel system regulator, I had the block off in the boost reference. Like, you know, the little block off plate. Put it in the boost reference. <laughs> you guys are probably going to be like, why would you do that? Well, then I put it, I did, I changed it up a couple of days ago to the atmospheric pressure. And as I was changing up the uh, boost, I was actually like, let me let me find out, you know, let me, let me look it up. Boost reference, actually, as I'm running almost 13, 14 pounds of boost, you put, you have to have it hooked up. Simple as that. I did not have it hooked up. So as I'm going watt, there's no boost reference hooked up. So I'm going lean at the top every time. Me and Jay are freaking tuning back and forth. He's like, I got so much fuel in it. He's like, I can't give you anymore. He's like, I don't. He's like, something's up with your fuel pressure. And I told him, I was like, I didn't have boost reference hooked up because I was told from two people that, you know, don't hook it up, leave it, whatever. So I did. Um, yeah, that was a big mistake. And now, I will tell you this right now, I have boost reference hooked up. And as you can see, I'm excited because I actually hooked it up. And after all the tuning from Jay, I went, did, a, did a hit. We are pig rich, as Jay said. And he's like, if this hooks up, if everything goes right, we are going to be very rich up top, which is fine, which is safe right now because there's more than, a, more than enough fuel. So basically... I didn't have boost reference hooked up when I should have hooked it up from the very, very beginning. Did not know this. Talked to four, talked to every supercharged guy out there that I know of and stuff. They're like, why do you not have boost reference hooked up? That's, you know, what boost reference does is every PSI of boost you're running, it adds that to your fuel pressure when you're, you know, going watt or I don't know if it's regular or at least I know it's at least when you're going watt, wide open throttle. But yeah. So basically, we're drop. We gained 14 pounds or 13 pounds. Sorry, I'm really sweating. You can see me here, of of a psi through the regulator because we hooked up the boost reference exactly what it said. I talked to Chuck, who did my exhaust, a couple other things. He's like, "Yeah, dude, we oh, you got to hook up boost reference." Hooked up the boost reference, took it out for a drive, and it went wild again. Of course, I will say this. I did blow another 180, 120 fuse because me, when I'm under there working, I'm not a mechanic. First thing I pass in my head is get it done, not, hey, let's disconnect the battery terminal. So as I'm hooking up the boost reference line, I sparked the alternator again and blew the friggin' fuse out again. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I knew it right away when I sparked it. So I had to wait two days to get a 180, 120 fuse. I just put that on today. And... Bam, took it for the drive, and we are good to go, man. So excited. So we can finally get Kong tuned in properly. Jay's off this weekend. Sucks, I know. But 
we're ready. We're ready to be tuned and finally get the right proper tuning in this thing. When we were working, he was it was moving pretty good. And I'm not going to lie, we only had about three degrees timing in it. Literally, maybe two to three degrees. And it was moving almost as quick as I was moving when I was running mid-11s. But he was giving it so much fuel when it wasn't. It was still going lean up top. And he couldn't do, any, couldn't do anything about it. Everything was good except for around 6,500. It would go and jump and it would be too much and the fuel would cut out. It would cut out. wasn't getting enough fuel because we didn't have enough pressure. But that issue was finally fixed. Super happy about it. And, uh, yeah, that's the update. I'm sorry it's been three weeks since I gave you an update on a video. I wanted to do things in between. But I've just been so busy, so frustrated with everything going on. I went out had to buy tools everything you know what i mean because i had to torque the, the supercharger down the spec and i didn't have an, an inch pound torque wrench you know what i mean steve does he did all the installs so i had to go out and buy that i did everything myself so everything is good right now we just got to get it tuned up from jay and uh yeah guys that's that's what's been going on so now that we got that we can get it tuned in and we'll be you know hopefully maybe possibly by next weekend we can hit the track i know i've been saying it for a while but i want to hit the track once we're tuned in properly and get get going with that so that's the issues we got going, guys. So, uh, yeah. Um, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Talk to you soon. Peace.